the madman! <laughs> the hero that you never thought you'd see. The Year of the Phoenix is coming, and with that, Ashes of Outland, and a whole bunch of other content. This video covers the new class, Demon Hunter. You can earn the Demon Hunter starting April 2nd uh, by playing through the new prologue mission, single player campaign that unlocks the Demon Hunter class to be playable with the release of Ashes of Outland on April 7th. Uh, and at that time, you'll get 10 Demon Hunter basic cards and 20 cards from the Demon Hunter Initiate set, which belongs to the Year of the Dragon for rotation purposes, which just means that in a little bit over a year, those cards will rotate out, which might be good because they push the envelope on a few of those. Each expansion in the Year of the Phoenix will have 15 Demon Hunter cards instead of, I believe, the usual 10 per class. So their class will change more during the expansions. So what's a Demon Hunter? The Demon Hunter's hero power is most similar to Druid, but it's really different because this is the only hero in the game with one mana hero power in Standard. That's right, at the very beginning of your game, on turn one, you can hero power and just deal one damage. That's a big deal. And also, it's really easy to weave in this hero power. So I got a few hours to play the Demon Hunter already. And let me tell you this, uh, I think it's going to be a competitive class on day one. It's actually going to look really overpowered when you first play with it. And then I think you'll be like, oh, okay, this might be fair enough. I wanted each time to just put in all of the Demon Hunter cards, like literally a 30 card Demon Hunter deck. That's how good the Demon Hunter cards are. Even though there aren't very many of them, they're very high quality. So starting the basic cards, we've got Chaos Strike. Two mana, give your hero, plus two attack this turn, draw a card. I think that might be paying a little too much mana for the effect, so meh. Aldrachi Warblades, it's three mana, two, three weapon with lifesteal. Uh, that's kind of cool chip healing, might be useful for a longer control deck. Coordinated Strike, three mana, summon three, one, one Illidari with Rush. So Rush is making its way into the basic set with the introduction of the Demon Hunter. It's kind of nice, 3 mana deal 3 damage flexibly and also summon a bunch of tokens for you to suck the souls of someday. Seder Overseer, I think this card is going to be pretty critical in most Demon Hunter decks. 3 mana 4 2 after your hero attacks, summon a 2 2 Seder. It itself is also a demon. It's like a 3 mana 6 4 if you have the ability to attack the turn you play it. So either a 4 mana 6 4 if you're just going to use your hero power, or 3 mana 6 4 if you have a weapon equipped uh, going into turn 3. Soul Cleave, uh, it's basically the cleave spell from Warrior, except you get lifesteal with it for plus one mana. So it's like, it's cleave uh, and you bundle it with gain four health, uh, as long as you just pay one more mana. And if you have some spell damage, you gain even more health. It's probably good to mention that cleave was changed a while ago where you can play it even if there's only one minion on the board soul cleave is similar so you can use it to just deal two damage to one enemy minion and gain two health and chaos nova this is the big control uh demon hunter enabler where you deal four damage to all minions for five mana that's actually a really really good deal from the Demon Initiate set, which again is basically like these cards came out in Year of Dragon for the purposes of rotation, uh, Demon Hunter gets quite a number of really powerful cards. I'm just going to go in mana cost order. Blur, zero mana, your hero can't take damage this turn. I didn't really find a use for this, but this might actually be useful if you build high attack weapons and then you're attacking really big minions. This could be zero mana, like, don't take six damage or something like that. Twin Slice, this card I found really useful. Uh, this basically gives you two uses of your hero power for zero mana. The second slice does cost zero mana. You can play this on the same turn that you have one of your attack lovers. So that could be the one mana two, two. So all of that is enabled by playing half of Twin Slice, so I found this uh, extremely useful, especially if you were playing an aggressive deck, but maybe a mid-range deck too. One of the really cool new keywords for Demon Hunter is called Outcast. Outcast is if the card is played on your left side 
or on your right side of your hand, uh, then you get a benefit, which means if you manipulate your hand enough, you get to play ridiculously overpowered cards. Consume magic, one mana silence an enemy minion, and outcast draw a card. That's much better than the priest silence ability, uh, and it's a pretty strong silence. Expect to see it in the meta if minions which have important text on it exist. Mana burn is kind of cool disruption. Uh, you spend one mana, your opponent has two fewer mana crystals. Kind of tricky to use, but in the early game you completely lock out their turn. Uh, in the late game, maybe you stop them from playing their combo on a certain turn. Osbril Horror is a 1 mana 2 1, which death rattles to add a 2 1 lost soul to your hand. That's a pretty sweet early game play. It kind of is like Firefly. Blade Dance on 2 mana. Deal damage equal to your hero's attack to three random enemy minions. Rogue wishes they had this, but no, Demon Hunter has it instead. And you can buff your hero's attack, or actually get hero's attack by using your hero power. So at the very least, it's three mana deal one damage to three random enemy minions, which is bad, but ideally you want to have a weapon, and then you blade dance with your weapon. You don't even destroy your weapon, your weapon doesn't even lose durability. Kind of sweet for the control Demon Hunter. Feast of Souls is the big payoff for demon hunters which want to have a lot of small minions on the board. Unlike Token Druid, you don't buff your board, instead you draw in their souls and you empower yourselves. Uh, this one can draw a lot of cards for 2 mana. Umber Wing. This is the card that I believe will be in every single demon hunter deck for the next year. Uh, it is your muster for battle type card. Uh, but now that you understand the Demon Hunter abilities a bit more, you can see how being able to attack each turn is really useful, even if it's just one attack. And of course, summoning two 1-1 one, one Fell Wings is really good. Eye Beam! Absolutely insane. Probably sees play in every single Demon Hunter deck also. Uh, three mana, life steal, deal three damage to a minion. Like, that by itself wouldn't be that bad. But the Outcast, zero mana, deal three damage to a minion, gain three health. That's insane. As a complete side note, I was finding myself sometimes thinking about using this card on my own minion uh, because I needed a little bit more health against aggressive decks. So that's something you can do too. Rapscale Naga is 3 mana 3 1. After a friendly minion dies, deal 3 damage to a random enemy. This card has the potential to deal ridiculous amounts of damage to turn it comes in, and it can do damage to face, so it can be ruthlessly aggressive as well. You play this, and then you trade in a bunch of your guys, you might trade, uh, you might kill off your opponent's big stuff, and then you also deal a bunch of damage to your opponent's face on top of that. Uh, especially if you're sending in 1-1s one -ones with Rush. Ildari Fellblade. Did you think that Restless Mummy was good? Well, this is a 4 mana 5-3 with Rush instead of a 4 mana 3-2 with Rush, uh, unlike the Restless Mummy, you're not going to be able to deal 6 damage immediately. You only get to deal 5 damage, and you don't get to deal with 2 different things. But what you do get is you get a 4 mana 5-3 that basically has Battle Cry deal 5 damage. That's insane, isn't it? That is really insane. 5 damage to a minion. Raging Fell Screamer, it's 4 mana 4-4 four, four Battle Cry. The next demon you play costs 2 less. Note that's not the demon you play this turn necessarily, so you can play it and then you can set up the curve into a 7 mana demon on turn 5. Do those exist? Possibly. Command the Illidari, 5 mana to summon 6-6 six, six worth of stuff. Uh, and demon hunters do love their expendable 1-1s. One you can command the Illidari uh, into Wrathscale Naga and do ludicrous amounts of damage. If you manage to trade off all 6 one, one Illidaris, you can deal 18 damage with Wrathscale Naga. And wait, that's not all, if you actually thought that was the upper bound of Wrathscale Naga. If you play Wrathscale Naga, and then, like, let's say you had a board of 6 one, ones this is never gonna happen, but... Uh, you have a board of 6 one, ones you play the Wrathscale Naga, you trade off your 6 one, ones Wrathscale Naga deals 18 damage, you play Command the Illidari, and then you summon another 6 one, ones and then you deal another 18 damage, which means, like, the upper bound of damage you can deal with Wrathscale Naga on a single turn is 36 damage. That's a lot of damage. And by the way, if you want a Feast of Souls after you sacrifice your 12 minions, you can draw 12 cards. Rathscale Brute is a nice uh, control demon. 5 mana, 2, 6, taunt. After this is attacked, deal 1 damage to all enemies. It is at least a 3, 6 taunt based on that, but extra benefits, uh, very spiky. 
Flame Reaper is a 7 mana 4 3 weapon that also damages the minions next to whomever your hero attacks. That is literally the Death Knight of the Warriors, Garrosh. And you mainly played that in order to get the Shadow Morn weapon. When you played Garrosh, you also got 5 armor and you changed your hero power, but you might not want to change your hero power because plus 1 attack is really useful for the Flame Reaper. Then you're cleaving 5 damage, uh, which is a lot of removal to your opponent's stuff. And then you've got Hulking Overfiend, which is an awesome big demon, 8 mana 5, 10. Rush after this attacks and kills a minion and may attack again. Now that is a big card that immediately does stuff when it comes into play. Uh, it's like a flame strike, which leaves you with some amount of health on a 5 attack demon. That's really, really strong. It's like Batterhead, except Batterhead only had three attack. Now looking into the cards that Demon Hunter is gonna get in Ashes of Outland, you've got Battle Fiend, one mana, two, two, and then each time you attack, Battle Fiend gets plus one attack. Uh, so that's a really insane card to play on turn one. It's a lot like Undertaker. You have Spectral Sight, it's a two mana draw a card, outcast draw another. Two mana draw two cards, pretty sweet. Really good for the aggressive decks, which plan to just play a bunch of low cost stuff and then you play your Spectral Sight, uh, and then you play your Skull of Gold Dawn. Skull of Gold Dawn is actually like super ridiculously OP for almost every single deck, I have to imagine. Uh, five mana, draw three cards. Sure, that's fair, right? But what might not be fair is if Skull of Gold Dawn is on the left or right side of your hand, you reduce their cost by three, so it's an insane top deck when you're out of cards but also an insane card to plan around to like get to the left side of your hand and then you get a refill late in the game because you mostly want to play your draw cards uh, at the end of a game anyways when you're almost out of cards so this is just natural synergy. If you get a 3 cost reduction on 3 cards that's a 9 mana savings so you literally are paying negative 4 mana to draw 3 cards like that is a valid way of thinking of it Unfortunately, when you play it in a low cost deck, you're probably not reducing like the cost of all of your cards by three, but that is the potential upside of it. It's absolutely insane. You've got Furious Felfin, two mana, three, two, battle cry if your hero attack this turn, gain plus one attack and rush. It's a cute Murloc. It's a two mana, four, two with rush. Uh, it's really good in decks that plan to attack each turn. Wargways of Azanoth. 5 mana 3 4, after attacking a minion your hero may attack again. It's kind of like Fool's Bane, except you can actually hit face after you hit a minion. So, cool. Metamorphosis, 5 mana, swap your hero power to deal 5 damage after 2 uses, swap it back. You are allowed to use your hero power first and then play Metamorphosis and then use the new hero power. The new hero power does cost 1 mana, so that is 7 mana to deal 10 damage over 2 turns. Uh, but you can do it immediately on the first turn. It's a really good finisher. It's a legendary spell uh, You can instead of doing the 10 damage all to one target you can split up the five damage to two different things Seven mana to deal 10 damage is a pretty good deal. And then finally you have pit commander Huge demon nine mana seven nine of taunt at the end of your turn summon a demon from your deck So play it in a big demon deck cheat out more big demons you can even summon Pit Commander of Pit Commander, and then you can start summoning a horde of demons. Whew! That is all we know about Demon Hunters for now. More cards from Ashes of Outland coming for Demon Hunter as well. This is going to be a class that's going to make a big impact right away. One final tip I'm going to give. Demon Hunters use a lot of demons, and they use a lot of early game demons as well. So, pro tip. Run Sacrificial Pact to Zoo, day one of the release, and farm those demon hunters. Pro tip!